Okay, so uh, what we were talking about before the is called the labor theory of value. It's the idea that this value. Is this yeah. <laughs> the labor theory of Romantic. value says that the reason uh, commodities are worth money is because they have labor in them. So if you right. think of things that don't require any labor to do, they're not worth anything. Like air, it's around us. We take It doesn't take any human labor to mm. get that. Other things might require things beyond human labor. Like, say, if we wanted to grow apples, we would need land and things like that. Right. But then you need human labor to plant it and to gather those things, and that's what adds the value. Right, right, right. So this, this, this has some interesting implications when you get into how things are uh, produced in the capitalist mode of production. So most people aren't one person making a thing, bringing it to market, and selling it. Most people are working for someone. Okay. Right. So they actually, uh, you know, to put it poetically, they take their own hide to market in yeah. order to sell it. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some implications with commodification of the human body there. <clears throat> but, um... <laughs> there are, yeah, there, yeah, there are. Uh, <laughs> so uh, th- what you do is you sell yourself for... You rent yourself, I mean, really, yeah. because you, you're not... Mate, if this, you're sold, then you'd be a slave. Clean. This is clean. But we don't if, rent ourselves. If you... We wait till marriage. No, you do rent yourself. No, we wait till marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I agree because you're saying. Uh, you're saying, okay, this time of mine is yours, and you can tell me what to do during it, and then uh, whatever I yeah. do during that time, whatever I make with that time is yours. It belongs to the boss. So... Bruce Springsteen. Uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> belongs to Bruce Springsteen. If he's the capitalist. <laughs> right, That's yeah. the name of the capitalist. He's the boss. <laughs> That's what they call him. Oh, God. Maybe that was too obscure of a reference. I'm I don't sorry. know that one. Oh, okay. That's what they call him. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, it makes me sound so old. My parents love Bruce Springsteen. Everybody calls him the boss. The Man. boss? Yeah. That doesn't even sound like a flattering name. <laughs> Not on it this wouldn't podcast. to a Marxist. It really yeah. wouldn't, would it? Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Okay, so, um, so this is the way that capitalist mode of production is organized. A capitalist has a bunch of money. He goes and he buys people and he buys raw materials and machines in a place, things like that. So mm-hmm. it's capital and workers, and he puts them together. They make commodities. He sells those commodities, and... He only does this if he can sell the commodities for more than it costs to hire the work and the uh, materials. Okay. Okay? So somehow, more value is made when you put the work and the materials together. Well, where did that value come from? The only answer, mm-hmm. in th- if, you use, if you follow what we've done before, is it came from the labor. Mm-hmm. Well, if the labor made the work, according to Marx, here comes the big revolutionary conclusion, then the labor should get the money from that value. Right. So uh, that's, that's basic m- Marxist exploitation. And if you look at this, it's not the way that exploitation is used by most people in common conversation today. Uh, exploitation usually means someone's getting ripped off. They're not getting paid as much as the norm, mm-hmm. or they're getting like exploitation is something like child labor or or um, sweatshop labor. Mm-hmm. In Marxist analysis, workers make all the value. So any money that doesn't go to the worker means that worker is being exploited. So every job in a capitalist society or just about every job in a capitalist society is a job where you're being exploited Mm -hmm. Uh, because if you weren't being exploited the company wouldn't make any money and they'd go under like it needs exploitation to run okay and that's that's the big sexy conclusion yeah 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 so where everyone gasps and and they riot and burn down the theater yeah exactly no and it's it's funny because um if the way that if you read like a lot of Marxist writing, it's always that workers, on for the most part, um, like if the vulgar worker, if you will, like the common uneducated, whatever, uh, they get it at some point. Like they right. feel like they're getting ripped off. Like they don't have this theoretical analysis always to get to that point, mm-hmm. but they kind of feel like they're getting ripped off, and they get that there are people that are richer than them, and it doesn't seem fair. 
but it's it's all kind of just instinctual or intuitive uh, on a certain level. But there is this um, certain tension. That's one of the tensions in the system, is this tension. And there's a lot of them. And if, uh, the old dinosaur Marxist way to call them is um, contradictions. Right. So you'll hear a lot about the contradictions in capitalism. But contradictions usually just mean a tension. It's a conflicting interest or things like this. And this is one of the major contradictions in capitalism mm -hmm. is that workers can sense this exploitation at some level and will resist it at some level. I would say, to me, to my knowledge of Marxism, the, the major crux with which everything else revolves in Marxism is, is this idea of exploitation of the worker. At least for my... It's, it, it's it, it is important. central, yes. Yeah. Yep, yep, and and yeah, so it makes sense. It makes sense to cover it in some some special in some podcast. Maybe this would be a good point to end since we came to the big conclusion. So yeah. thanks for tuning in. This has been Commodities and Exploitation One Hundred and One. Mm -hmm. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>